Now, our exclusive conversation with retired Marine Corps General John Allen, who served most recently as commander in Afghanistan. His retirement last month after turning down a NATO command was understandable, given the toll on his family from years abroad, plus being drawn into the controversy over former CIA Director David Petraeus, who resigned after revealing an affair. General Allen was cleared in that investigation, and we spoke with him and his wife, Kathy, at their home in Virginia. You were in the middle of prosecuting a war with so many young people's lives at your hands, and the investigation happens. Well, I was notified that uh, uh, emails uh, were had become uh, uh, known uh, that was that was going to require uh, an investigation uh, into the appropriateness of a relationship, uh, and I had to reflect on whether I could, I believed I could remain in command. Uh, and I believed I could. In fact, I felt an obligation to, a duty to remain in command. I had to deal with uh, the realities of something that was going on back here. I won't uh, tell you that, that there wasn't a lot of pressure in that regard. Uh, but my sense of duty to the war effort, and more importantly, my sense of duty to the troops, demanded that I remain focused on that. The thousands of emails spanning a three-year period were between General Allen and Florida socialite Jill Kelly, who had gotten to know Allen and his wife when he was assigned to Central Command in Tampa. Investigators launched an inquiry to see if there was anything inappropriate in the emails. A senior defense official immediately said there were 20, 30,000 emails. Mrs. Allen, what did you think when you first heard that? And the funny thing is, I guess because I got so many emails every day from the same person Jill that Kelly. were yes, that were very, always very friendly. Always, um, I always use terms of endearment. He always used terms of endearment. Sweetie, dear. Absolutely. When someone shares an email with her husband, you know, I thought, is is somebody thinking this is a little odd that, you know, they're they're taking this so seriously? I mean, I have a lot of faith in him. I have a lot of faith, faith in our relationship. My biggest concern was for him because I thought, I don't know how he can run a war and then have this added pressure. Did you ever think, oh dear, what, what did I say in those emails? Anytime you're investigated, and you have to remember back across three years, uh, I, hadn't, I didn't have any concerns about what was, what was in the content of the emails. I was just interested in putting it behind me as quickly as we could. You were worried for a time about his health. Absolutely. Uh, my concerns caused me to have, I, you know, I had some issues before because I have auto, autoimmune issues. But when this, when this broke, it really took a toll on me. Further adding to your stress. Well, that's right. Um, every, would... phone, every phone call was pretty grim, and they were getting worse by the minute. For many years, I'd, I'd told uh, Kathy as we had as we had dealt with these issues, that uh, the day that this becomes too big, I will drop my letter the next day. Um, she wasn't going to tell me, but I was afraid where this would all end up. And I finally made the decision it was time to go home. In late April, a retirement ceremony was held for General Allen, an elaborate and emotional affair among the guests, David and Holly Petraeus. David and Holly Petraeus are like family. Given all that he and I had experienced together and our families had had together, I couldn't retire without asking for Dave and Holly Petraeus to be present. And I assume you haven't really talked about what happened. That's right. Uh, it doesn't require that we have a conversation about it. What Alan does want to talk about, does want people to remember, are the troops. During his retirement, he spoke movingly about those he lost during his command in Afghanistan. 561 troops you lost, and you said that's a number you... You will never forget. That's right. I think about it all the time, and there's a moment of reflection about those 561 empty chairs around dinner tables uh, when families gather for Christmas from now on, or they gather for Easter, and some precious member of the family, they're gone forever. Uh, and that's, that's a generational loss, because the family will be different, the children will be different. Every one of those losses has to mean something. There are some very moving images of you 
at those memorial services? Um, what was the hardest one? This particular ceremony was for three sets of remains. And the wife of one of the soldiers was in an adjacent unit. And I'll remember her gripping the coffin, the flag-draped coffin, crying his name in the back of the C-130. I'll never forget that. Because there was the catastrophe of the loss playing out before our very eyes in the belly of that cargo aircraft as we were sending that young soldier home forever. The largest loss of life in a single incident came in August 2011. 30 Americans, mostly Navy SEALs, were killed when their helicopter was shot down. It was about four in the morning. The initial call was that we, we've got a bird down, uh, doesn't look good. And then the, the next call uh, came in and said that it was, a, it was a catastrophic crash and we probably lost everyone. The loss was great and uh, uh, it was a grim night. It was a grim night. After the ceremony was over, he went and found the people who prepared those caskets. And one by one, he thanked them for what they did. He said, I know this must have been hard on you. There was a healing that took place. When you look at what's happening there now in Afghanistan, we've been taking more casualties of late. What does that tell you about what's happening now? Well, I think the Taliban are fighting for their lives right now. Uh, we've seen success uh, by the Afghan National Security Forces. I think that the Taliban have recognized is that uh, we're not going anywhere. You know, eventually our numbers will come down pretty significantly, but there's going to be an international military presence in Afghanistan for a long time. And you believe that is absolutely necessary that we remain? Oh, there's no question. The international community will remain engaged. Our forces will continue to train the Afghan forces well after 2014. But Iraq is a different story. You spent a good deal of time in some of the toughest periods mm -hmm. in Iraq, and you see it today. Are you alarmed at all about what's happening there? Well, I am. Um, my, my fear is that uh, we, we could see a, a polarization of the principal elements in, in Iraq. The increase in violence for all of us that served there, in particular those of us who served in the Anbar province, which was a really violent area, uh, we don't want to see a return to that. Would you have liked to have seen I think we the military did. stay? I think we all did. The Iraqi uh, leadership was unable to put together the political uh, will necessary to give us the guarantees that we needed ultimately to station a large force there. So you think things would have been better off today right now in Iraq? I don't think there's any question. We also asked General Allen about the alarming almost daily revelations of military sexual assault. This is a leadership issue. Um, commanders can't be ambiguous about this. We can't not talk about that. Commanders got to stand in front of their units and tell the people what they expect because silence isn't good enough. This is an opportunity to lead and we should be seizing it. Allen says leading the many soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines has been his proudest accomplishment. The young men and women through generations who we should all be thinking of this Memorial Day. This is an opportunity for all Americans to think not just about the troops in uniform today and all that they're doing every single moment, but what everyone has done. The sacrifices of all of our troops for so long to give this country the quality of life that it has and the freedom that we enjoy every single day. Our thanks to Kathy and General Allen, who's taking on a new role advising Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel on Middle East peace talks.